Um, so moving on in the agenda, um, first, big thanks to both Rebecca and Jay. I think that was incredible information that we got. It was a lot of information, which really brings us into the next portion of the agenda, talking about um, a common language, common facts, all related to growth and enrollment, which, as we know, aren't necessarily synonymous, synonymous terms. That's a tough word to say. Anything you want to add to that? Nope. So we're going to open this up to conversation amongst all of, of everybody. So, and I don't want to start. Can, could you just clarify, like, what you mean? Um, <laughs> 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 okay, so for example, and Dom, I am not going to warn you, but I'm going to borrow your okay. example. When um, Dom was talking about growth, and could we tie it to enrollment? Well, if we're looking at enrollment coming from older homes and not necessarily new homes, that's two different terms. So it's not saying that just because we've added 75 new houses, we're expecting hundreds of children. We have to take into account 160 babies that were born, and the and the and the and And it's really just making sure that we're at a common place. Are we, are we doing, is this on the agenda because we want to agree upon what norms between the are yes. two bodies? Can I, can I add that? Of course bit? Yeah. Please. Yes. I, uh, having watched your meetings, watched mine, you know, the beacon's been referenced as, um, to nobody's fault, as an example of uh, a big driver to, and this is not actually an awkward back up. I'm actually quoting Amy Quinn, and she's not here, so I'll just throw her on the bus. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, she, she, she earlier in the year said something on the lines of, you know, well, town council, stop letting the beacon happen, and if you don't like this enrollment, right? Well, we have eight students in the beacon and 216 units, right? So I just, let's agree on things that are that. And Rebecca's slide, I believe, solidified this. The beacon might not be the culprit, but Avesta is, right? So, or old stock multi-families that have up to three bedrooms of the culprit and not necessarily carrier woods who's one and two and brand new. And I know that could shift as those get older and their price point might get down. But those are the types of things I just think it's important that we all just agree with. Well are there things that you're asking for? Yeah, I, I just I just want us to say, for instance, one of my biggest takeaways tonight was the 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 birth rate. Right? Yes, I knew about it. I hadn't really sat through Rebecca's original presentation. I glanced I had glanced at her data, um, but so can we agree that birth rate is a significant driver of growth? Because I've never heard a town councilor mention birth rate before, right? So, um, you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, how about <laughs> Are we capturing this? Like, is the goal? Yeah, I, think so. I, I would like to. Like, we can agree on five things that are just okay. drivers of enrollment, drivers of growth, difference between growth and enrollment. Uh, Ken and Betsy both. You know, t we have other fish to fry with traffic and <coughs> services, and that's that's fine. But it gave you guys some insight into our permit system. It gave us insight into your projections, and uh, now I, I already feel like we're in a better place. Would someone the board will take notes? Well, you know, I'm not sure. So, so I, I have a question for Hillary, uh, because. So the, the, the big takeaway for me on all this is how good the, um, the model really is. And so the, um, you know, 2000, after, around 2015, 2016, you know, people started saying, hey, wait, so what's happening with the model? We need to have it updated. And so that's, you know, she came in, the back came in, she updated the model, and then um, the administration is plugging in the numbers to see how it's going. Um, you know, the, the 170K, you know, so you know, just math, but that's, that's what, 30, 40% higher than this time last year. Um, and so, it, to me, the, the thing for the town council, you know, if we look at the growth ordinance, is, is going to be how to um, look at the impact on one factor, which is the schools. Um, um, that, at least so far, that's really, for the growth ordinance, that's the only factor in it. Um, but uh, Council, Councilman Johnson has brought up, you know, that there are other factors that we should probably be considering. But 
I know for me personally, like if we were looking at units coming online, it would make sense for me to use the growth model. So I guess Hillary, no, so I, I guess you asked Jay about where they where they got he said national data or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm not under, I guess I don't understand why when we're looking at growth in schools that we're not just using our school growth model. So I mean it is on Mississippi, it seems like it's a good model and it's and it's worked for a number of years. So what, what were you referring to specifically when you asked that question of Jay? I, I think I was just asking, look, I, I'm wondering, <coughs> like, like the fact that, like Leanne was saying, a two bedroom with 1,200 square feet equals two thirds of a permit because they assume that two bedrooms will have two people and that impacts the town in two thirds of a way. I, I, I guess my question is, like, that data, like, how does one bedroom affect services? How do two bedrooms affect services? How do three bedrooms affect services? Like, where does that come from? And it sounds like it's just, like, kind of what's always been done. I mean, I guess, Jay kind of, I mean, he, are you familiar? Yeah, he was like, I don't know. I mean, it just is. Yeah, I was just and I was just wondering if it's something like, you know how the, the government updates, like, the the COLA rate every year. Like, I was just wondering, is this something that's like constantly updated in terms of what, it, like national trends, how many people, are people living in smaller houses with less rooms? Are people, li you know, like, is that data ever updated? That was my question. So, and were you data that, that we're basing. The impact that we, that the town looked at as they were considering contract zones and things like that, that you were using a certain growth number on that, or were you answering the question about the two thirds? I guess I'm not sure I quite followed that question. The, the, the question to the two-thirds is that, you know, 10 years ago, that the you know, town, I wasn't part of that process, or at least I you know, wasn't leading that process. I don't recall exactly the data that went into sort of coming up with the actual numbers, but it was based on, as I think sort of Tom alluded to, it was based on sort of a recognition that there is a lesser, you know, through the models, through what was looked at, through the research, there's there's less um, expected demands on, on services. And what that looks like, you know, on schools versus uh, uh, public safety versus public works, I don't know sort of the various breakdowns offhand. This isn't something I've do dove into deeply. So to your question, is this something we should be looking at? Potentially, I mean, there's, as I said, it's been 10 years. I, and like I said, I don't know. So I think I answered half of what you were driving at, but not. Related to national data, and I just don't, I don't know what you were talking about. There's, um, you know, there's just national data that's available for uh, impacts of development. So doing research, looking, going to the, uh, you know, American Planning Association, talking with various consultants. Um, so just doing that type of analysis. I guess I'm not when sure. When you do that analysis, you're looking at what? What are you analyzing? I haven't done it in ten years, so okay. I okay. guess that's, I, that's you know, the town hasn't done it in ten years, okay. I should say. So I haven't done it, but I'm. Okay. Sort of, that's how I would approach it, is sort of take a look at what, what's the best available data to work right. off of. So yeah. and I guess that's to my point. I'm not sure why we would, I mean, we look at all sources, but it seems like we have a lot of good data to look at from our own experience, our own town, and our own model. So if we're going to try to get common terms, I guess that's... So that's you're saying that about. you're accepting the school model, you're comfortable doing it? That's yes. what I'm hearing. Okay. The base level multi family. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nick, did you have a follow-up for Jay? Or? Wait, sorry, those are two different things. She said she had two <coughs> scenarios, base right. level right. and then right. base level plus MFF. Yes. Yeah. The second one. Yes, the okay. second one. That's what the school board has been. Is that an agreement? Because yeah. that's what we've been doing. Yeah. Yeah. Is that an agreement across the town council as well? I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Right. I, 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 I don't think it's our role to do the wrong. I, I think she's done a good job with a couple different potential scenarios that could happen. The variance between what she projected last year and what would happen today for a one-year projection is about a percent. So all the models are going to look reasonable. You can't really judge a 10-year model based on the performance in year one. Because as you go up 10 years, the variance is more like 10 to 15 percent. So I, I think of it differently, and I, probably because of my experience, but I... Uh, tend to look at, well, this is what your expected is. This is the worst case scenario, and this is you know, the best case scenario. 
And I, I think she, so I think focusing in on one model is doing us a disservice because you're, you're, you're locking yourself into something that is going to be wrong. I, I'd rather understand how wrong do we think it could be and, uh, and make a decision if you're talking about a school based on that. And I think she can help with that. I think maybe I'm stating it too strongly. I think what we were trying to avoid, let's fast forward anywhere between four months and a year or, you know, what happened when you when we do have the conversation that cannot be spoken of tonight? Um, <clears throat> I think what we're trying to avoid right now is us having a reaction of, well, you know, we don't where these modelings come from, or you know, we reject your premise, right? So I I think this is an effort. I know this is an effort to lay groundwork to a a, a conversation that just doesn't get sidelined by the council saying. Well, who is Rebecca, and where did those come from? I, I'm trying to avoid that now. So I, I by the way, I, I, I'm completely on board with you. I, when somebody says that her model is completely accurate, I, I'm a little confused because it's one year, right? So I'm, I could have probably, I mean, it, it's not a hard prediction one year ahead, and that's not a knock on Rebecca because I. So she's been presented. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I, maybe I'm stating too strongly that we're officially accepting. I, we just, Peter, then Nick, I guess. Uh, actually, you don't have to say that. I'm yeah. sorry, Peter. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was so proud of that. I mean, the guy <laughs> sees, wants to be in it. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I just wanted to echo, and I, I think she had talked about it. And, it. and as we look at anything, that's been one of my issues. I used to do some of this work for Hannah for the acquisition, but I like what, what Peter just said about. At, if we could agree that when this does come forward, I think it's really important to look at what is sort of the most optimistic, what's sort of the most pessimistic. So it gives you a range, so you can kind of, there won't be a single answer that's perfect. But knowing what those corridors are, that, that you're somewhere in the middle there, would be really helpful for me anyway as we approach the conversation. So if, if what we're trying to do here is get common agreement on things, I would love to see if that is something we could agree to. The modeling will do kind of have a way. That's how we do the budget every year. We kind of have an image. That's really that's a really helpful framework for me for decision. Alicia, are you? Did you? Are you uh, out of time. You were drawn. You were drawn. Alicia, then we'll go. Hillary. I thought you said I was running. I yeah. asked you. Were running. Yeah. Alicia, then. I, I I guess maybe then um, what I would ask for is that if people are going to go out to the community or speak publicly in meetings that they're not speculating based on their own premise, that we have hired a professional who has been accurate in the multiple years that she has presented the data. And um, that we're not making our own calculations and our own predictions. And I, I think it's a fair point that you we, you may want to consider ranges, in, but, but my concern is of people <coughs> presenting those as their own facts and, and you know, why would we hire this professional who has been accurate and we have been able to rely on it and and then, you know, there could be 10 other sources of, of data points out there in the community and I don't think that's fair to anybody. And I said that too, but when I said, oh, I could guess that was not, I thought I didn't mean that much. I think, I think just based on what John and Peter said, like, I don't think anybody at this table thinks that 10 years out this is going to be a super accurate prediction. I mean, prediction is volatile. I mean, you can't predict anything that's going to happen in 10 years. But I think the the pattern that this and the school board recognizes that, and the pattern is that you know we don't wait 10 years to have another enrollment study done. Do you know what I mean? Like, so we kind of follow the numbers. We say, okay, this is really on track with kind of like this model that she recommended as would probably be the best fit. And then when it starts to, I think, you know, in 2000, whenever we had it hired her last time, it had been like four or five years, and we were like, you know what, I'm not sure, there's, there's some more growth in town, I'm not sure that these numbers are looking like as accurate as they once were, let's redo this. So I just want to be clear, like, that we don't say, Okay, let's have a 10-year um, you know, enrollment projection, and then in 10 years, we hope that it's accurate and do another one. Like, so it's kind of ongoing work, um, and I and I just I think I hope that that maybe clears up a little bit of some of the uh, um, concern about the the accuracy of predictions that are 10 years down the road. But I do think that. Um, 
you both have a point. I mean, if you have, so we've kind of chosen what, what to, to look at the numbers based on the model that she thought was going to be the most accurate, and it has turned out to be the most accurate for the past year. But we have the entire report, and we can look at, you know, she, she referenced six different models, um, and that is the, the worst case scenario and the best case scenario. So that information is out there. I think what we're looking for is an acceptance that this information and the and the modeling that she's chosen is the is going to be the reference point that we all use for enrollment. Well, and, and to kind of build on what Hillary said, the, the, the model that she's project, uh, given us, the model itself is such a small piece of, of the breadth of that information. And what I'm living with tonight is realizing that despite what our society might believe, this is not a 144 character problem. So you started this agenda item by talking about you know misplaced, maybe sensationalized statements. And those who said, well, I'm going to use the beagle one again for Amy's not here. Um, you know, a beacon, if it's not building a beacon, we want to have problems in our schools. Obviously, we can't use statements like that. We have four really big factors that, that she champions in there that regardless of what the model actually does, I think those four things are something we need to seriously think about, watch, and also talk about in the community. That's birth rate, that's migration and in, uh, of students, that's turnover of existing housing, and the building of new housing. All four of those things together are what really are leading to a growth in our town that is going to impact our schools, as well as the many other things that Councilor Johnson talked about around the community that the council has to watch. So um, I, I agree that her models have been really um, accurate as some of the works in educational statistics. I'm amazed at how close they are just a year out. And I know a year's not a long time for variants to creep in there. Um, but what's almost more valuable to me is the breadth of the data that she has advised us in her last slide to watch carefully as we move forward and, and watch the changes on our district. Ken and then Jim Ray. Yeah, I, model aside, I, I, I love the data in the model, and, and speaking really of, of things that are going on in our town and not on a national level. And a takeaway for me for the council is we're starting to uh, review our growth ordinance. I know that's just a component of it, but I would feel safe to say that lots of folks are questioning the, the fractionalization of the two-bedroom home and its impact on the schools. So that's going to be my big takeaway of this discussion, especially in the, in the, in the way we're moving out the middle, middle, I guess, pronounce that, middle, middle? Minimal, 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 Especially with the cost of housing in the town of Scarborough. People want to move to Scarborough. They, you know, they, if they want to, they're going to have to come to smaller houses. So, again, takeaway for me here is that we're going to review that fractionalization of the developments. Jean Marie? I just have a question because I've got a set of data here that is from Andrew Bradley. Oh, yeah. Is that, is that for Rebecca and <coughs> Wendell numbers or are these another set of numbers? Which one is yeah, that? Thing this know. is the Scarborough Public uh, Schools. Does it say edited at the very end? 10 one enrollment trends observed and projected. So and it was given to <coughs> Peter to send it to us January 14th. Mm -hmm. I guess you were in the steering committee. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is it this? Yeah. I don't know. I've heard it's like this. All, it's, 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 all this is is basically this is Rebecca's numbers, the best fit okay. with the high impact factor. So this, that's the, the source, so. Yeah, I took it out of all the different tables and all of Because I'm just trying to figure out. Yeah, so we yeah. may just put this together, but these are the numbers from her. Report. Yeah, okay. So so she's the sourcing of these numbers. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't have a problem. I think she does a great job because I've seen her present before and not just obviously here. That's why I asked her, what have I seen you before? Um, but that being said, I think that it's important that we look at all different, I don't know, different sources of data. Because anyone who's taken statistics or data knows you can make statistics or data say whatever you want to say, depending on how you approach it. Uh, that being said, I mean, I think Rebecca's numbers are, are great. Um, and they certainly meet your needs. But I think we also want to be looking at you know, the play, our planning department and what we're looking at for projections and whatever, because I think when you look at different sources of data, as long as you know that it's accurate, that it's vetted and whatever, then you're covering more bases. Uh, and it's okay to ask questions. 
And it's okay to question the so question. Can I just clarify, Jim? Are you saying that you have school enrollment data from the town? No, 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 no. I'm just saying we also need to be looking at what are the growth patterns in the town. Uh, and what's yeah, coming I, up. I wasn't and saying we should only use no, no, no. And, and, another thing, and another thing we really need to be looking at is bonding. I mean, where are our financial? What's the financial situation? That's another set of data. So I'm just putting that up. So I, I'm in? sorry. On um, using the Vermeca's enrollment study as our reference point. But considering the top end and the, the low end, as, as sort of what we talked about, and no other enrollment study to my knowledge has been done and that been presented to all to this body, and so therefore that should be the one that we reference as is sales for school for for school for school, for school, 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 not for the town. Is right. everyone in agreement with that? No. Okay. I don't think you should put us on this. I think you should use it to try to inform your decision. You should use as much data and information as you can to try to inform that decision. But I'm not going to say today that I'm not going to look at something else in a couple of months. Uh, and I don't think that looking at her high and low is uh, accurate. That's what you suggested. Well, no, I think she could get there. But I don't think that the plus or minus 10% is um, specific to that. Her, I think that we Kristen. have to come up with something. We can't be tossing all different kinds of numbers out there. Like, there are going to be documents that are going to be created that exist. And I, I think we have to at some point. We will always look at multiple sources, but to pick one just to have a conversation that we're all having the same conversation, we're sharing the same conversation with the community as a whole, just to prevent two people sitting down and saying, well, they told me this, or someone told me this, like, that's my concern, why it would be nice if you Can I just pop one thing in really quick, and I'm so sorry to jump over. There's been a couple of other comments tonight about it's only a one-year study. This has been going on for 10 years, and it has been spot on accurate. Um, did Hillary point? It gets updated every, like, four or five years. But it's, or less, but it has been spot on place. I really want to be cautious to to be sounding as though we're disregarding those numbers and that there's no accuracy to them. I mean, they're within one or two people, students, month over month. And they're really spot on. This has been some amazing work that's in place. I, I just had to say that before I comment. Patsy and then Marshall. Yeah, um, I think, John, when you asked her about um, error, she was not referencing, I think what these guys are talking about with the high and the low is the six scenarios mm -hmm. that she's put forward. And in those, I don't think she has a margin of error um, that she's talked about. At least I didn't understand it that way. She said she was putting in a margin of error on uh, some data she was developing for the Department of Education, for the DOE. I didn't, I, didn't, um, I didn't take that to mean that she was developing any data. And I just, you know, I kind of want to pipe in on the extreme statements because you know, we've been saying, okay, well, there's not many students coming from the beacon, but we've also had a lot of statements out in the community, well, there's no impact from any new development anywhere. So, I mean, these extreme statements go both ways, and, um, you know, the, I mean, if, if someone can, wants to demonstrate, you know, where this model or method, you know, where they have concerns, you know, I, I definitely will listen, but I don't, I don't know how many different sources we want for school enrollment data when we have a school department. I, that's just kind of where, you know, and it, it, and it has been accurate over 10 years, but I, you know, I'm definitely open-minded to hear you know, alternatives. But. And we don't have to, I mean, nobody's voting tonight. I, and John can, John can look at the model and say, I take issue with X, Y, and Z. I'm not, I'm not trying to forbid anybody from looking at stuff correctly. I'm just to the point, I think it's, we have, we have a tremendous amount of pressure on us, tremendous amount of capital improvement projects. I'm just trying to lay the groundwork to do it the right way, no matter which way it all falls. I'm just trying to avoid X, Y, and Z. So. I, I appreciate your efforts with this, to present, and you know, I understand why you would want to lay the foundation and expectations regarding the beacon, and that's a 
point well taken. And, and you know, although I think that Amy's premise was oh yeah, sure. was, I mean, was sound, yeah, sure. know, I can general. understand yeah. from your perspective why that would be troubling. However, you know, with the enrollment data, you know, that's just as resounding for for us on the board um, to have people say this is only one year, or no, I'm not going to accept this premise when it's been accurate, and to then go out into the community and use data that none of us know anything about. If you want to do that for your own purposes and question it, I think it's fine. But you know, it's very concerning to me that there's unknown numbers being cited as as accurate when we have long-standing numbers that have proven accurate from a professional that we've checked, we check on a monthly basis, and um, there's no alternative that has proved to be correct. And so if we're here at the table saying these are our goals, you know, I, I think I agree with Betsy. I mean, we need to come up with, with, with a plan, and we need to be respectful with each other as, as as bodies and, and what we need. John and Hillary, and then me. Yeah, sure. I, I just want to clarify. I, I do have some technical issues with the work that Rebecca's done, but I think it's fantastic. I, you know, I'm not trying to take away from that in any way. Where most of my issue is, is with the way you guys talk about the work. And talking about it as being extremely accurate is not the way you talk about a statistical model. It, it's it's a model. It, it is what it is. And yes, it may have been accurate up to a point, but that you're inferring, you're, you're taking a leap and um, putting that into the future. That's where I have more of a problem than, than anything that she's done, because it, it, it's, most of what she's done is reasonable. Um, it's proven accurate each month. Right. Month to month. Her prediction is is met in the, in the current present moment. That's accurate. Right. But using that to justify building a new school is where I have a problem. Use your model, use the fact that the schools are in horrible shape, and I'm your biggest advocate. I feel like we're uh, putting bad data out there to try to make the case, and that's where I have the problem. Uh, it's not anything about building a school, it, it's that I, I feel like we're cheating uh, that, and that was important. That was important. Tell me what I mean. So I have two things. I just I wanted to say um, to Jean Marie's point, I don't disagree with you. I think that the more we can look at it, the better. And that's absolutely something that I think all of us at this table can uh, can understand. But you know, the enrollment data for our schools is just one piece of a lot of data that we have. And I guess my point was that we don't use this by itself you know, walked in a room with nothing, you know, with nothing else. It's not a vacuum. But when we talk about school enrollment, if that's your specific piece of data that we all use the same information and, and what we're asking for is for that information to be from this report. You can use the low model, you can use the high model, I don't care. But but the point is that it just for that one data point when you talk about school enrollment, that's what I'm trying to say. Not that we don't, not that we ignore any other pieces of data that are out there. And my second thing is, um, you know, there are a lot of um, rumors flying around about our new school and what the justification is for building it and when it's going to happen and all kinds of things. And it's funny to me because I'm on the building steering committee and these aren't answers that we have yet. A lot of them. So that's exactly what they are. They're rumors. If you have questions, um, I mean, Peter's on the committee. I'm on the committee. So you can ask the committee to make a uh, presentation to you before the time. That, I mean, you can ask that event at any time. We're planning on doing it anyway. But um, but I want to be super clear that the recommendation from the building committee was only partially based on enrollment numbers. Um, and it was, that was like one third of, of the reasons why we came up with the recommendation that we came up with. Um, I mean, I'll just say it real quickly. The other reasons are diverse, the, 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 the expansion of programming needs and how those have become completely different over the past 10, 15 years. And the third reason is the state of our facilities and the fact that they aren't 
even up to daily code. So I just want to, I mean, I know that's not the conversation no, we're having no, tonight, no, but it's no. been mentioned several times. Yep. And so I want to be like one million percent sure that you know one, that, we're, one. <laughs> that we're not saying not look at like our enrollment number, we have to build a new school. Like that's not what's happening. That is just one okay. reason. Okay. And I also, thirdly, want to say, <coughs> no, that's third. I thirdly want to say that I think, you know, I, I, Alicia, you can call the, the numbers accurate, and, and, they, and, if you, and if you, if by accurate you mean that they have been on, on target, then that's true. You can say that you shouldn't do that about a projection, but the fact is that we have to have enrollment projections, whether they're accurate or not, is some kind of tool that we need to use knowing the limitations of a projection. So I just want to be like put that out there too. It's not like we can just say, oh well, forget it. We won't project anything because projections aren't, you know, that's just a projection and there might be a five percent deviance or whatever it might be. So your turn, uh, Paul. Oh thanks, Heather. Um, <laughs> I'm going to shift the conversation a little bit about another observation that I made about uh, what's, your, what's your name? Rebecca. 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 Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> is, which is, and and a lot, something that came to light to me today is what we know about the downs is the downs has to operate within the 135 growth permits, not reserve. So they have to operate under the 135 growth permits that are allocated January 1st every single year. So my question is, why is the downs even in the enrollment conversation when they are actually baked into the assumptions that have been going on since 2008? Mm -hmm. So I want everybody to think about that because Rebecca didn't include the downs and I actually think rightfully so she did not because they are held to the 135 growth permits. She did include the downs. Because yeah, it's, it's easy. Embedded in it's the embedded. embedded. So if we're gonna if we're gonna I think this is a serious conversation that I think I think we all gotta think about because unless I'm mistaken, the downs is not allowed to be treated as a separate entity and a a reason for a new school. Have I missed something that came up where it is? Yeah, the so the downs can only they're only no, 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 I understand right? that. Like, why are you specific? Yeah, was there something that no, I'm not accusing anybody. I'm just saying, I mean, I look at the you learned. Though. Yeah, it's something I learned tonight. Okay. That's, whoa, that's whoa, it. hey, whoa. No, I'm saying, <laughs> no, no, I just I just found that really intriguing. Like, you know, I'm, we all, I mean, the downs is something that is driving a lot of conversations, but it strikes me that the downs actually shouldn't be in the conversation in school. Like, if we're going to adopt Rebecca's model, the downs can't be in the conversation. That's what I'm again, no, what conversation adopt her model is a reference point? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't sound like we do. No, that's not true. I'm just... Yeah. Have we agreed to that? No, I don't. I, I think we're having a conversation. I think we're having a conversation. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah. But I'm not going to log something like that in now. Peter? Yeah, I think taking this, I'm not sure where this, whether this is inbounds or out of bounds. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, but, we'll just, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. But I'm sitting here struggling. If we're having this much difficulty understanding what we're talking about, yeah. what we have to think about is we have to get the public on. Yeah, and so, but that's what this is, the first step. Well, I know, yeah. but, but I'm just saying, so this is a great starting point yeah. saying, even if we're having some struggles about what numbers to use, folks out there are going to also have that same struggle. So I think part of the conversation should be, what do we do to be able to convey a message? And I just want to clarify what I said. It wasn't a high, low model of what she presented. It was really just a risk core. There are a lot of, and, and right, she's doing year-to-year -year projections. We're looking 30 years down the road at where it's going to be. So, I mean, birth rates can change. The economy can change. I just think, I was trying to say in the macro piece, when we put in front of us how big the school is, what we need, mm -hmm. there's probably going to be some conversations about ranges of heights. Mm -hmm. but, but I'm just, I think as we have these conversations, it's a real tension point for us. If we're having this much difficulty arriving at a, a comfort zone, what do we do? <coughs> I think it's a great you know, thing to work with. Yeah, that's it. Well, and I think, the, uh, you know, to Ken's point, I think that, and to Hillary's point, I think the, uh, the fractionalization is huge, and the downs is in the fractionalization, right? Because they don't, they don't have to use 
a whole unit to get to the 135 or whatever, and then I guess they get more than 20% allocation, Jason, at the end, or, or something like that. So I think... You know, yeah, but that's the same logic that's applied to the 135, no matter how you're looking at it. Right, yeah. So, not yeah. to put on the downs, I'm just yeah. saying yeah. the two-thirds, right? Yeah, sure. So the yeah. two-thirds, the one-half, um, you know, why isn't the two-thirds three-quarters, you know? So, I mean, I think that's going to be a major issue going forward um, because, you know, the, uh, the impact on the school... Uh, it looked like for the one, two, and three bedrooms was about a 0 0.6, mm -hmm. somewhere between a, somewhere between a 0 0.43 and a 0 0.67, depending on what it was. But there was a, a higher impact of the one, two, and three bedrooms than the complexes with just one and two bedrooms. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that it, it sounded like potentially there was an agreement between Rebecca and Jay to kind of maybe drive down a little deeper mm -hmm. on certain data. And I would see that hopefully as an action coming out of here, um, because I think everyone's a little bit nervous on that front. Yep. And the only reason I'm including the downs is just to say they're building a lot of multifamily housing, and so that's the two thirds is going to be a factor in that, as it is with the ones that are coming out of the pool. Sure. Well, it, it, it strikes me that if we're talking about enrollment and growth as one of the primary factors on this new school front, that and there are other reasons why the, the, the new school is being considered. Maybe we should try to work towards educating ourselves about those other factors as well, rather than just you know focusing only on the um, yep. enrollment numbers. Okay, so let's try to wrap this up. And I'm going to go back to I'm going to go back to Nick's comment. He, what we could agree on is that this is not an enrollment conversation. It's a four pronged conversation. I, I, that's which enrollment, birth rates, condition of the facilities, and... Yeah, you actually bring up five. Birth rate, migration students, turnover of existing housing building. Building. So, I mean, so we could agree, yeah. we could agree that we... Mixing up that, yeah. Yeah. Okay, but can we agree that we try to keep our conversation about this project, the school, focused solely on those issues? That could be where we reach some agreement. I think Peter has a good point about macro. So we could we could sprinkle in mac in macro macro bag for however we can. Wait before we move on. Can we put that? Yeah. yeah. So I just want to clarify that the the things Nick was talking about were specific to enrollment. Mm -hmm. And then what I was talking about for the reasons for the school enrollment was only one piece of it. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. You're right. I'm sorry. I I can. So can we agree that that's what our? I, I mean, I think I just think maybe it just helped the conversation if we. If we realize those are the decision points, mm -hmm. if we can just agree on that, then we can we can have all the de debate we want about enrollment, or we could have debate we want about the conditions of the school. But at least it keeps us speaking, having honest debates about really what the crux of this decision is. I, I, I'll throw that out to them. in an attempt to wrap this up in five minutes. I think that's a great idea. Okay, so we're gonna wrap this up in five minutes. So let's all say our last piece and. I don't think there's anyone sitting around this table who is opposed to looking at and probably building some sort of new school facility, whatever that may be. Um, I think the issue for, and, and I, I'm going to talk to the council, and maybe I'm not totally with the council, the issue is the timing. That's the only issue that I know I've got, or with most people that I've talked to um, on the council is the timing. So I'm just going to leave that out there. So that's one more factor that you know we need to look at. Is now the right time or not? And if not, when? I think that's um, just a pop-up little model. Part of our last section is to get together with creating another meeting to talk right. about priorities. Right. Because we've got lots of initiatives here on the table. We need to decide <clears throat> what is the right time for us. Exactly. Well, I'd like to work that in, though, with the other, I mean, because in order to answer that question for you, I think you need to know what what, what does it look like when I go into the school? Yes. How safe is it? What are the safety concerns, right? And then that will help you decide, drive your, your timing decision. Well, yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, 
Well, well, I mean, if you go if you go to the school and you determine it's completely unsafe and and inadequate for programming. Well, my daughter went to the old Wentworth school, so I went through that. But yeah. Right. I mean, I mean but, know, but, yeah. but I mean, you'd need to see that and get that information, not only the enrollment, right? But, but to, to to address the timing. Right. But our job as counselors also is maintain tax stability in town and the financial scheduling, the right. capital improvements. Right. So that's going to be huge with us. But how do you how do you weigh the schools with the other with the other priorities? That's what we're going to if, talk about. If you don't if, <laughs> if you don't have all of the data, my point is if we're only looking at enrollment as this as this body and not the other drivers of the need for the school, then how do you make as a council? Well, I, I said that I said through this in 2017, which talked about all the facts. And things are and things are worse. Oh, and so I'd love for you to know what the what that is today. But that today. to me yeah. is not yeah. the total factor in driving what I would approve right now. Well, no, we're not asking for what we're doing. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to end this section. This section of the meeting is officially over. Uh, <laughs> Do you want to do a recap? Yeah, well, Sarah, you are the we, queen of recap. Recap, recap, and then... We literally agreed on one thing. Um, <laughs> really? That's not bad. Which was multiple factors, multiple factors to consider when uh, discussing enrollment and figuring out what your birth rate might be. Yeah. 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 Migration of students, turnover of existing housing, and building of new housing. And that we won't use the weekend because... Well, no, I, it, it's, a, it's more but, of a frame. Oh. And you guys have an action to to tell them to reconsider the fraction issue. Yeah, uh, Councilor Johnson made uh, a reference to it, but I don't think, I think we need to make a stronger point that this council was committed to a uh, full review of the growth management ordinance. So right. that's going to be a subject, yeah, obviously, right. of the And that's starting the 20th. As the well, no, the whole ordinance uh, for the back. Yeah. So that, that's a conversation that's going to be going on. And that's, I mean, hopefully, uh, this helped us with that conversation. Oh, yeah. The other side, cool. like, we're doing this with you guys. To help inform the ordinance committee to do this. And it should go back and forth. Yeah, the decisions we make on that ordinance should be So that's something we agree on. Okay. I was going to say it later, but um, I don't think we have to agree on all the chart numbers. Because I mean, I, I think we have, from my perspective anyway, nothing's come before us. Right, from the school board for a school. There's nothing on our So I don't have an opinion, although in general I support improved school facilities. So uh, when you're ready to bring it forward, bring all your ammo. You know, the conditions, the timing, how much it's going to cost, and then we can actually start to discuss it and debate it. I think that's the problem, though, that I have with comments in terms of How can you possibly know what have an opinion on the time when you don't even have all the information. And so you're jumping ahead and saying that you have a problem with timing. We haven't even suggested the timing. So this is our commitment to you. We will not speak of the timing publicly until you bring something forward. Right. I haven't seen anything. Is, do, is right. everybody okay that with that? Point, so we, we, can't, you can't, we can't keep saying in public, I'm not going to approve a new school on the November ballot, which has been said. Well, I, I, they haven't brought it. It doesn't. The school doesn't exist to us. It yeah. doesn't exist to us. Yeah, but we had a counselor come to our meeting saying she would not approve a new school. No, I know. Yes, you did. But it was in the oh, okay. that was, that was, that You're right. I mean, that's true. But what I'm, but what, I would say that. What I'm saying is, <laughs> we can give our, we can give our opinions about your school all day long. But we're, what we're not going to do is we won't discuss the time. Because as far as we're concerned, we're concerned with a community center, WEX, a turf field, and everything else. You guys, like I just joked around, like, John's right. As far as we are concerned, the school isn't in existence in our world. Yet. So we're, it's not fair of us to discuss can the I timing just, of school if it's okay. not even there. Can I just clarify something, John? I mean, the community center isn't on the capital Right now, it's not a capital improvement. Okay, but I just want to be clear, like, that that's not, like, a it's not a capital improvement, it's, it's, and that's the only reason it's been for my perspective. Don, you did, you did not like what I said about it. I just know, I'm fine with where we are right now. I just want to remind everybody that uh, uh, there's a difference between questioning and debunking. Okay? Yeah. Debunking means exposing a sham. Okay, So my questions were not in an attempt to debunk anything. They're purely to try to understand some a current state of where we are with things, and I got off the agenda on that, but also to try to ask the basis for some assumptions, including not counting 
uh, one bedroom apartments. Yep. So uh, it does go back to the point about if we're, you know, we can we agree on the date, you know, you know, the month, that kind of thing. You know, we're focused on trying to establish some broad agreement. We have a lot of rough road ahead, and I think that uh, Councilor uh, Chairman Johnson said correctly that. Uh, this is really not before us now, number one, but number two, it is going to be coming you know, into the picture at some point, and there are many large other issues that are going to have similar pressure on capital planning as well as financials, and will be in budget season in a matter of days. So, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of work ahead, and I think that we need to be comfortable with questioning, and uh, if you don't attend uh, our meetings, I'd be happy to give you a recap and bring you up to speed. Um, and I get to be perfectly honest, we don't want, I don't watch all the tapes and don't attend all of your meetings, but that doesn't mean they're not important to me and they're not something that I will learn about and get educated on. So, I mean, I think this is a good start. I, I think that we had a good discussion and uh, I just think that we need to get, get more comfortable with difficult questions uh, because those are the questions we're getting from the public right. and that we, you know, we ran to try to answer those and that's what I'm trying to be attuned to. And when I say I don't support, I wouldn't support the school on the November ballot, yeah, that's true. I'm saying that right now is the way it is right now for me. Because I haven't heard any differently. And I know that I I don't have anything other than what some of what we've been given here today, what's been out there in the newspaper and whatever. Um, and if I'm feeling that way, because I'm a huge school person, school supporter, and I'm a former teacher. Myself. Are you a real estate broker? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Just light, light Jesus it up. Jesus <laughs> <laughs> But that being said, it's like convince me. Which is because if you have to convince, because if you can convince me, maybe you can convince the public. But right now, I mean, in fairness, okay. Leanne, as chair of BOE, you did at a meeting said it would it'd be quote inconscient. In, 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 unconscionable for you guys not to get this on the ballot in November. I said it'd be unconscionable. You're right. So, so in all fairness to the BOE, that was a pretty strong <coughs> signal to the town council. Yeah. So, although you haven't brought it forward to us, Correct. and out of respect, we had agreed that we would have that conversation yeah, right. with yeah. a broader group of folks <coughs> because not everybody has sure. a stake in what the priorities are sitting here today. Right. We need to have that conversation. They're not. As a they were very clearly stated by the chair. So they're not rumors. They were stated publicly at a public meeting by your chair. So, yeah. Well, you said that it's rumors about the timing, but they're not rumors. It was. It was no, I just meant. I just meant there's rumors flying around about everything. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But that's what we're talking about. Where it's going to be? I mean, I've heard everything. Do you? Do we make some progress? Do you know the new school is going to be built at the down? I mean, that's not even like. Well, not a rock yet, I'm just saying, like, these are the rumors that I hear that we as a building steering committee have even discussed. I didn't mean specific to that. I just meant, like, random. Okay, well, okay, can I use. You get the last word and then we're done, because this is getting up and up. Yeah. Okay, so to, to build on something that Don said and to circle back on how we started <coughs> this segment, this, we all should view this as a learning opportunity. We're, when are both bodies together to workshop right. these big ideas? Mm -hmm. So if every single one of us comes away from today agreeing or not agreeing, like we've all been presented now the same information. So when we talk about laying a foundation so that in the future, when the school board comes forward and says enrollment was a factor in our decision making, the, the town council isn't going to get enrollment. What are they even talking about? They have enrollment. We, we've now covered that and so for me, this is a good foundation. We don't have to agree, but we've all been presented the same information. We've had some good discussion, and so now it's moving forward. What's the next thing that we will need to workshop in order to bring the town council along with us as a board <coughs> to continue to make sure that we're all having the same conversation? And and, and I don't think that this was unproductive. So I hope that people aren't. No, the last 20 minutes, everybody is going to get a little bit crazy. That's pretty normal. There's 20 of us around the table, right? So we'll move on. Next one. We're going to talk about eight corners. Yep, we're ready. All right. Everybody's feeling warm and fuzzy. Thank you. 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 Thank
skipped it. You guys just want to cook it down. You guys are out the lawn. The lawn. <laughs> Okay. about what was going on with ACARS and provide an update on the launchers. He lost two boys earlier today, so I was going to do a little bit of talking to him and he's thinking. And then when he gets it wrong, I'll just like nudge him a little bit. I can, I can talk very, very. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're wincing. Oh, I just, I know. It doesn't hurt, it just sounds like. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so for those I haven't met, I haven't met a couple of council members, so I'm Todd Jepson, I'm the school facilities director, and uh, I got to uh, assemble the lovely modulars that are at eight corners, and uh, take care of all the uh, facil school facilities in the district. <clears throat> so the eight corners, while, while Kate's clicking, the challenge with putting in modulars is, frankly, a timeline. Uh, as many of you who were part of the conversation last spring know, we came to the council asking for some emergency funding, if you will, uh, at a late time in order to get classrooms available for this year. Uh, at that time, we had not had any approval for funding, so it was very difficult to go out and get pricing. We didn't have a plan. Uh, we just knew we needed them. So uh, it's very difficult to ask subcontractors to come out and give you hard numbers when they don't even have a building or a plan to look at. Um, and we weren't in a place to give them that information until we had approval for funding for such a project. So we were approved for uh, funding using impact fees. Uh, I was put in an uncomfortable position to give a ballpark uh, cost that's up there at $260,000. All I had was the cost of the actual building at that point. Sorry, the only thing I had to do was this size. <laughs> which, <laughs> which was, uh, the building itself was $160,000, and, it, and it's two classrooms and a hallway. Classrooms each have bathrooms in them. What we didn't know at that time was the requirements uh, to put those into effect. Uh, one of them was State fire marshal permitting required a, us to bring in a new sprinkler line. Uh, we couldn't just extend the system to <coughs> existing portables. The other thing, uh, after we got planning board approval for the site, uh, I was instructed to consult with the sanitary district uh, for the sewer connections, mm -hmm. which I did. And when I did that, I found out that the sins of my predecessor mm -hmm. were revealed uh, and that. The six existing modular classrooms that were there had never been permitted with the sanitary district, so we ended up paying back fees uh, since about 2001 for those existing six trailer classrooms. We don't know who to blame. We have lots of right. six, but all Todd knows is it wasn't him. <laughs> I wasn't here then. Um, and also, um, I was talking with Rocky at the break that when you embark in any project, you are responsible for the sins that will exist on the site. And if you run into a sin, you're really obligated to do the right thing and fix it. So there were no pre-existing uh, record drawings for anything uh, except for the, the brick part of the building. So when we were putting in the uh, new and required sprinkler line, we ran into a power line. We didn't do any major damage, but it caused a slowdown and some extra time for the site crew, which happened to be Rizbera, and they did an excellent job. He had a great operator, so he didn't rip it all out of the ground, but it did require some extra time and work, hand work, which slowed things down. Um, and then the, the desired state was to have a connected hallway, if you will, uh, but due to the fire marshal requirements, that would have had to be you know, sprinkled and heated, and that would have caused way more cost than I was hoping. And so we ended up building an uh, ADA compliant ramp for wheelchair access and did a, an awning style cover over it instead of a stick built, heated, sprinkled, much more expensive uh, structure. We also ended up, there's one thing that's not on here, we actually added some, uh, uh, required some extra power that the building didn't have. The good news is, is because I grew up on a potato farm in the county, that 
quarter by uh, upgrading it and we salvaged the old power pole, the old portables that the old went for it. And I still have greater panels in the pole and everything. So I'd have to reuse that. So we did achieve some savings somewhere, um, but ran into a few unexpected items that were more costly. The other thing we did have good site for site work uh, estimates on because we added a parking lot to accommodate extra cars, which you're required to do when you increase student enrollment and therefore staff enrollment. You have to have enough room for parking, so we did create um, a 34 uh, car parking lot addition uh, to the west of the building and. We came in under budget on that, so we were able to achieve a $3,000 surplus there. Um, but some of those overages, um, we, are, we arrived at about a $64,000 deficit. We were able, through some CIT funds that existed, uh, to charge the project costs for furnishings and equipment to existing CIP uh, budget line items. And so the final project deficit and case the spreadsheet you heard she's amazing at it is the fifty thousand dollars cost. Well I'm gonna jump in with my voice to talk about this is a, this part of the budget that was the two hundred and sixty thousand dollars included fifty thousand per se work. So we had a deficit on the modular side, we had a little savings on the pad, the asphalt pad that was our update for us. So that got us to the sixty four thousand. And the furnishings, pictures, and equipment, um, I was using FF80 and um, acronym. That was actually funds that we had set aside specifically for furnishing and outfitting the modular, but it was in a separate part of the budget. It was in our movable equipment or furnishings line in our capital budget. So what we did was we pulled back on that a little bit. A lot of our guys to um, did the work instead of us having a construction company come in and build cubbies and um, and shelving units and the kinds of things that you need um, to put kids into a classroom. Um, we bought some modular units, we bought some less expensive units and, and our guys did a lot of work on that. So the savings that we were able to recoup in that line, which was also specifically targeted for this project, but in a separate place, we applied that to the overage that we were having in the um, replacement and outfitting of the modular training. So this final deficit is the amount that we're, we're currently over budget on the project as a whole from the impact fees that we received from the town council back in January. Sorry, Kate. I think I, I think I might have like three more words. So, <laughs> um, so the, the reason um, there's one more slide, you guys are asking that. Oh, look, that's a good one. So the reason why we're sharing this with you guys, obviously, um, which I think you already know, is because it's our request that those that the overage is funded from the impact fees. So we've established with the prior board um, last year that this project is an appropriate use of that. Um, to do the ordinance, which is up there. Um, we were asked by the finance committee in December to to investigate if you guys say no, are there is there another way to fund this within our existing budget? Um, and the short answer to that is yes, but we would be doing so by taking money out of places that we've already that we budgeted for other things. So there would certainly be an impact. And we believe that it would be the more responsible thing to do to take that money from an account that has sufficient funding for a project that's already been deemed approved for the use of that account. And I think, uh, I know that you guys generally use the impact fee fund to pay down debt service. Based on the late last numbers that Tom provided us, you could still maintain the, the um, schedule of paying down debt service with that account and her. Just, just a quick question as, as you think about this, which were modulars that have already been done. Also, 
also in the budget, I think for this budget cycle, we had two additional modulars. Are you going to have the same same issue with those? So we should maybe be considering how we're going to fund both of those <coughs> issues. We wouldn't be looking for additional funding in impact fees because we have enough room in what we've budgeted for CIP in this year to purchase the additional modules. Well, just in building, yeah, we still have fit up costs that we now right. have accurate. Well, that's what I'm asking. I think so. so. What's in the but I thought what was in the budget was just the cost of the modulars and what the fit up costs. Correct. So, so I'm asking, are, are we expected to get another 60,000? shortfall in this year's budget. Not if we budget accurately as much as we want, which is no, 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 no. Because I mean, the modulars won't come until the summertime. So the outfitting costs can be budgeted for accurately if there's additional costs in FY21. The reason that we needed money for the modulars in FY20 to order the buildings right. was because we need to order them now in order to have them delivered over the summer. So you're, so you're saying you're going to put the fit-up cost, if you will, will be in the budget capital budget for the cycle. Exactly. And far more accurately. Taking it into consideration. And so for the FY21 budget, we will budget an increase in our CFP. It's, uh, it, it will be far more accurate and it will be less than what we've done yeah, yeah, here. No, I was just because it's the second the half of a building. But you're absolutely right. I think you know we could say, oh, well, let's also think about what's coming forward. But I think our plan was to, because we have time and we're not in a crunch, to find that money the way that we were a year ago this time. We could do it planfully yes. through the budget process and, and do it somewhat more appropriately. Okay. Thank you. Great point. Do we have any students in the there? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh. So the, I was disappointed not to see the ever repeated walkway. I thought that was a, would have been nice for kids at this age. The canopy that we have, is that meant for Commercial use of the school? So it has, yeah, yeah they use it in the school we've got <coughs> the one they use in Gorham and um, yeah, it's 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 durable. Yeah, it's, it's not going it's anywhere. Neat, it's a neat uh, test thing, but the one thing that we didn't do, John, I'm glad you brought that up, is that it's mm -hmm. got a cover right now. It's fitted for sides, but they weren't able to put the sides on because of the weather by the cool. time we got it done. Um, so there's a question of expansion and how they connect in, and I don't know all the details, but we are going to put sides on it um, ultimately, and we'll find money to do that in our operating budget. Um, well, that's something that would make it a whole make it a little more enclosed. And I don't know if this, I mean, just to give you an idea, so originally those two were going to be classrooms, but because they're now not connected and they can't have to tag in and out to get them. They actually ended up moving the some of the specialty classrooms out there where kids are all are probably going to be escorted by adults anyway and taking the classroom space and putting putting them do, do you see what I'm saying? They swapped so out like art and music or not art and music but like reading recovery music. Actually, intervention, next, intervention next year art and music will be out. Yeah probably but my point was originally they just for your information I just thought it was interesting. Yeah. They were going to be used as classrooms because at the time we thought there would be a covered walkway and there would need to be a key entry. <laughs> but because for safety, um, because there's not a covered walkway, we wanted to make sure there was still a key entry and having kids going back and forth through key entries without adults was a nightmare and unsafe. So they, they switched the uses around. Okay. I don't know, just a general question, probably a moot point, but for lessons learned. There was no vetting, no planning, engineering review of this project at all before it took off. I mean, I would have found the deficiencies and arrears payments to the sanitation district, the parking lot being not being big enough. How, how did all that happen? We we did have a site engineer engineer the site, um, and we did dig safe it. But unfortunately, the town because it's a private, it's a dig safe is a private company. Right. They don't keep track of what everyone does unless you report it to them and that wasn't reported in 2000 and whatever it was that that line was put in so that was a minor oversight but um, 
But yes. it was more towards, I think, our town's engineering department. I was just wondering how a project like this comes into the town, get funded by the council, and not get vetted through a standard it, it, it did go through the planning board. Okay. Um, yeah, it did go through the planning board. Yeah, but but just because it's temporary, temporary, there temporary, there wasn't the same well, review as... Just, just to speak to something that Ken said, because I don't want to conflate two different projects, mm -hmm. Kate did show it and had a slide of the parking lot where we were able to save. That was a separate CIP project. So that was not like, oh, we put this portable in and then we realized we needed a parking lot. The parking oh, no, lot was, our, it was in development. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that was a wholly separate yeah. project. But and we just was, happened there was to... a little bit of extra money left, so we applied that extra money to some of the shortfall in the... Yeah. Uh, and I, I think I would go back to what Todd said earlier, is that any shortcomings in the process were really due to the aggressive timeline. We got the report in January, we had a chance to review it really quickly, and we basically said, oh my lord, we're going to have all these children arriving, where are we going to put them? And now that we're all having these big conversations and that we're all on board with all of these things, I don't see that kind of thing happening again, because we can be planful on a longer timetable. We also know, we hadn't done modular since 2008, that was the last two that ever went on in the district, and the modulars have actually changed. They, they, they don't build them in Oxford anymore, so you can't go up and look at them being built. They're actually built in Georgia and put on a trailer and driven all the way clear up here. And they're different. The framing's different. Everything, so much about them is different. So we didn't really know what we didn't know, other than looking at the plans they gave us. I gave that to my fit-up contractors, but again, when they get there, they get there. So. So, Leanne, you sent out a spreadsheet, um, on a, a, I don't have it in front of me, but it was a big line item, this, so you answered one of my questions from his wife's spreadsheet, I'm like, 15 grand for this hint? What the heck? Yeah. So you answered why that was. But there was, I think, like a $30,000 approximately line item for tech, um, and it doesn't sound like, like, so it's a, you're not quite using it for classrooms, so do they have classrooms, they're just not... Uh, home rooms. Home rooms. Yeah. Well, I don't know. So you, you had to put all that tech in. And they so that, yeah, they still okay. use all of that. It's just not a home room classroom. It's still okay. a classroom that needs all the same technology. Mm -hmm. Can I just John, you had started talking and then kind of stopped part way. Yeah. Did, you did. Did you want to finish what you were saying? I did. Do you know what that was? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, to your point, yeah. it, it, when the project was coming up, I was a little bit vocal about it last year, um, and not in favor of because for many reasons. But the planning review is different for uh, like these are temporary. So I, I think we just had a site plan review, which had on the site plan where it might go, but there was no architect or engineer that stamped a plan, as far as I know, that was reviewed well, planning. Borough Palmer is the site engineer. They stamped the engineer plan for the for the site plan for both the parking lot, separate project, and the pad on which the modulars sit. So they, And they are the ones that presented our project to the planning board the first time, and the initial proposal was to put two off the end of the existing one. And then when we realized that we're going to need two more and there's not room, we changed the location so we went back to the planning board for a second visit to say, we've revised our plan because we need two extra and there's not room on that end. So that's how they got put there. And I'm, I'm with you, I'm not in favor of these things either. They're a pain in the neck. Necessary evil. Necessary evil. Yeah, I think, you know, I think earlier I said, you know, about the learnings and what we learned going forward. I think Councillor Johnson's comments are a good one. It's not only on this for the modulars around the estimates, but it certainly was kind of an issue too for the turf field where we put a placeholder over a million two for the budget and came in at a million six. That perception with those folks out there that were trying to get on board, so I think it is a learning would be just you probably should visit some cushions in these numbers or yeah, that's we are contingency this year. Contingency, because you don't know what's under there. Right. I mean, it's just, just a learning of the board yeah. that doesn't have anything to do with it. Absolutely. But I think right. in these types of things, if yeah. we're not certain of the numbers, no question. We should just make that clear. So. Yeah. I, agree. Yes. I agree. I agree too, but it's kind of yeah. difficult 
thing on the up because you're trying to be fiscally responsible and you know we're getting the tough questions and you know the, this balance of wanting to be right trying to predict it and be accurate um, and, and we, will, we will be much more accurate this year now that we know no, what yeah, they are and what arrives but, but, but it's hard target, you know it was, it was right. just in general right. we're better off being a little conservative or at least put this claim. Oh, right. 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 And what, so what are we at for for modulars within these within these um, couple of years? How many yeah. modulars? Yeah. Uh, so we have two last year that we installed that are in use, and we'll have two at Pleasant Hill and two at Eight Corners so, upcoming this so, year. So when we talk about the timing of the schools, you know that's six modulars at three hundred thousand dollars, two hundred fifty. $350,000, you know, and that, that's pretty significant. So the only other hesitation that I have is the funding source. Um, and I don't know how deep you guys got into it the last time, but when I read our impact fee ordinance, uh, the school piece, I mean, this is kind of the part that overlays all of our impact fees, but the school piece is pretty explicit in that it says that the, those funds are going to be used for capital improvement projects that were listed on uh, some submission to the DOE years ago. So it's always been used for debt service. So I, uh, I don't doubt that debt service is an appropriate use. The concern I have here is this isn't a capital improvement because it's temporary. It's not a, it's not a permanent structure. Um, and state law requires you to use the impact fees for the purpose for which they're collected. So I don't know if you guys have had an attorney no. pine on it or if it was just a council kind of action at the last meeting, but that's that's where my hesitation is. But you could use the fact fees to pay down debt and take that to pay this. So it's more of a technical issue. I would love to have an opportunity to talk to the attorney about that, specifically looking at the middle school for those temporary buildings that have been there for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Those are on foundation. I mean, so, is there a difference between that and the Those spots? are modular buildings. These yeah. are portable. So that, that's another nuance that I think we work up on. There is nothing portable about these two structures. <laughs> no, I know. But, but technically, <laughs> they are. Trust technically me. they're mobile. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hear what you're saying. It's just, I don't know if there's it is a nuance to it. Yeah. They're not going to go away in six months. I mean, these are going to be a long-term, it's a long-term investment to solve a true need where we don't have the space to build on more building. So I'm just looking for somebody smarter than me to tell me that. Tell me to check. Okay. okay. I don't recall that we had legal review. I think everyone, there was a rich, full discussion uh, regarding this language, and I think there was general agreement of all parties that it, it fit within that. So I don't recall formal legal opinion, no. Only thing I can recall that we talked about was updating the language in the ordinance to reflect the fact that we had gone out and done a new proposal to the Department of Education and that you know yes. it shouldn't be tied to something that's all those years ago. It should be tied to the current current reality. Um, so I don't I don't feel like there was a lot of talk about whether it was appropriate or not. It was just it wasn't matching the existing. I mean, it definitely needs to be updated, right? The final com the final point in here is when those projects identified in that section have been completed, blah, 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 the town council should amend this ordinance or repeal it. So, I mean, There's a little nuance that says you can use it today until the debt service is retired. Right. Oh, you got it. I mean, I, I, will, I will tell you that. <laughs> Actually, I think that's good. That they're not my favorite things for schools. I don't think they're an adequate permanent solution for classrooms, but they're not dump heaps. And I invite you to come over and I'll show you through the existing ones, even the old ones. Um, my son goes to King Middle School and all of our portables are, you know, in the same wheelhouse as King Middle School. So, I mean, it just, it's all relative. It's what you deem uh, of good value. And so I'm not saying that our portables are awesome, because they're not. They're aging and old and they take a lot of work. But they're not dumps. You know. Just like we try hard to keep them habitable because we know we're, we're living with them for twenty years. No, no, that's we're going to call back and.
mull it over. We can talk about it, mull it over. This is just an update. And Unless you guys want to take action? Really? Yeah. Really get this? Yeah. Really get this? Yeah. I was thinking of John's question. Let's do it. Quick legal opinion. Let's do it. Let's do That ship's already sailed. Well, I'm not sure. Yeah, well, once we've done it, twice, you know. So, I mean, it's just a good question. I think it's a good question. It's an accounting issue right now. It's going to cost you more in the lawyer fees, then we'll just decide. <laughs> I like your style, oh, sir. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm a developer, can you get a soft like yes if the legal opinion comes out? You can get a let's move on to the next agenda. All right? John can dissect the ordinance later. That's all we're here for. <laughs> if I'm a contractor in town who's been paying 3200 bucks a year to pay this fee, I'm going to be angry that we're using it for portable because it's supposed to be used for something that's the same quality as the rest of uh, the school. And the way the state law is written is if you're not using it for what you said you were going to use it for, you're supposed to refund it. And that's why I think it's important to understand that nuance. And I don't think it's too late because I, the way I read the annual statement, they kind of didn't explicitly say they were using it for it. it I cannot imagine, Councillor Puglia, that Pucci is being an angry man. He's so data driven. <laughs> <laughs> cannot imagine. I'm not a developer. Yeah, but, <laughs> but if you were. <laughs> um, so we go to the next discussion point, we'd like to discuss um, the, everyone's favorite discussion the tarp and track. Um, and what a proposed approach may be, as well as the schedule for getting this back in front of as a referendum to the town. Hey, um, do one of you guys know how to do a mirroring trick on these laptops? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
schedule, so he's very mindful of this. Uh, but the issue really becomes is how we move this forward. The problem doesn't go away. It's only going to get worse, frankly. And so perhaps against my better judgment, Sandy and I had conferred with our staff to come up with just a different way to move this forward. And one suggestion we'd like to bring for you, uh, forward tonight is to separate the projects, is to do the turf first. And that's really based on the premise that that's the most in need of attention. Um, as an aside, I'll just share that uh, Michael Gage has said, though he may be able to relocate spring sports because of the nature of them and uh, other facilities, fall sports is simply not a possibility. There's not uh, a place for him to move football and soccer to. And I can only imagine how the community would react. And so part of the motive, big part of the motivation is to uh, replace at least the turf portion in time for fall use. It's fall 2020. So one suggestion we have is to separate the two, uh, to bring the turf project itself to the voters uh, at the June referendum. And I have a, what I think now is a, a low estimate, and uh, Councilor Hayes, your point's well taken. Um, I put that number up for conversation points. I think it's probably 600 to 650, but I will get a, a better number. Uh, but I wanted to just kind of frame the conversation tonight. So again, we're picking the turf because of the urgency repair. Um, it's going to be less overall cost, and perhaps the voters will receive that better. Uh, it also can be completed in a five to seven week time frame, so assuming we get approval in June, the work can be accomplished before uh, preseason in early August, I think in August. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, I think there's a conversation around pursuing corporate sponsorship, and that's something that I think we really need to do that's part of the conversation the next time we go up to the voters. The other parts of this project uh, would require us to do infra repairs, again, that's what we refer to, both for track and turf, and that would be in the next month, six weeks at most. And then, of course, we've got the track and post uh, uh, component of the project that would have to be considered. I just put up in November, you know, that may not be the right timeline, but again, that problem won't go away. Uh, and it's certainly not the best way to do a project. Uh, and the mobilization, and it's not the most cost effective and efficient. Uh, but I think by essentially doing all the work within the track area, which is the turf, um, the track can then be done after the fact without doing any damage. So that's a suggestion for discussion. Um, so are you, are you saying this is an alternative proposal like to, to get it passed or be or for the timing of the sports? Uh, perhaps both. Okay, but is there still an opportunity to put just put it all on the June referendum? There is. I don't think we have the turf playable. A uh, combined project takes much longer to complete, so I don't think the turf would be playable for fall in that scenario. So, is so this you would effectively wait to do that a full year. Okay. Is the corporate sponsorship um, if we got that, would, we, would our amount still be, does, does the $500,000 include the corporate sponsorship? It does not. So anything no. of that would be additional? Correct. Okay. And just a point of order that Tom and I discussed this. If a corporate sponsorship put this below the $400,000 threshold, okay. we would still put it through our plan. Okay. You would. I thought the one corporate sponsor that we were pursuing they did, but there's other corporate people in the world. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. It would not be a formal request, but the, the feedback I'm giving you, I think it's going to be a challenging answer. Tom, I want to thank you and Sandy for reframing this issue. I did want to try to turn through this up with the, the ballot referendum. I recall it was 1.2 million. Was that the figure? Well, we would have preferred 1.6, but 1.2 is what went. I think we're in a similar result at 1.6. Remember, I voted for the higher yeah. numbers. I remember that too. <laughs> but, um, can you help us know what I'm trying to get at here is I like the reframing, but I don't know how much I'm going to like it, and I don't want to speak for voters, but if it comes back again at 1.2 or more, um, I'm, I'm really wondering how, you know, how that's going to look. So can you help to you know, give us an equivalent here of what well, we expect this proposal would mean all in compared to 1.2 million. I, I can't. All I can say is the problem, the, the problem doesn't go away. It only gets more expensive. Mm -hmm. it's, it's that simple. So, uh, <coughs> if you like, I'm here telling you we're going to need, this is the cost, and you can take it for what it is. We're not making those up. And, and, uh, I'm 
sorry to be so frank, I'm like it's late and tired. But <laughs> <laughs> so it's late and I know everyone's tired, but so one, so you're saying if we if 1.2 were on the ballot again, then some you know in some upcoming uh, vote in June or November, would that would that be sufficient? I think so. No. But we're we're talking about only putting out about 600 to the voters yeah. to only do the turn yeah. and kick the can on track. Right. Yeah. But, but so, Tom said if you do that, the total if it was going to be 1.2, yeah. aggregate, it will now be sure. more than 1.2. Let's call it 1.8. 1.8. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so, so, so that doesn't make any sense no. to me. From a, but the thing I really strongly weigh is that so there's there's a couple messages here. One was that the voters didn't like it. Okay, they're telling us that. So. And we don't literally like the idea of putting the same number up before the voters again. I think that would be a low probability of, of getting who knows. Um, but I, I, but if we're, you know, if the lesson here is that uh, you should really vote in favor of anything that comes before you, otherwise it's going to cost you more later. That's that's a of the three choices. That's the that's a, the lousiest message. Uh, yeah, and I'm just saying that. Candidly, to this group, I, I, I agree that would be a horrible way of packaging this and messaging it out to the public. I, I mean, I, 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 can't, I can't do magic here. This is the project, this is the cost. I, I don't know how to repackage it for any lower price. Betsy, then Peter, then Leanne. Uh, so I'll just ask the town rumor mill question Is there another turf field in storage? No. Yeah. What? Rolled up like an No, it's a rumor. It's a rumor of towns. It's an original installer. Installed the field, and the markings were all wrong on it. And he had to rip it up. Oh, that's the rumor. I don't. Well, that's why we're actually all here. We need us all to roll it out. Let me rephrase that. We're not in possession of any. Tom, I have a question. Yeah. Can we say that? that oh, okay. Can, okay. Yes, you're right. I talked myself on Yeah, this is jumping too far ahead. I'm sorry, but you know, the biggest concern I hear from the voters is why weren't we planning for this? And I just don't see that problem going away by giving the money now and then, you know, 10 years from now, the next group of people, probably will be of us sitting here, will be getting asked the same questions. You know, so what's the prospect for planning for this? Like any other field, um, with, through maintenance fees or reserve fees or putting something in the budget for it? Or yeah, this was discussed, and I beg your pardon, you weren't part of those. Uh, the, the plan was, at the inception of this field, there was a reserve account created, and user fees had been charged ever since. The intent was to provide for the maintenance, but also ideally have enough money for the replacement when that day came. Uh, the reality is, since inception of this field, every other school in the area has brought on an artificial turf. And so I'll show you the revenue numbers. They have plummeted yeah. uh, to the point that we might have you know, $2,500 in, in, uh, in uh, So we'd have to budget fees. for it if we want to plan for the future. We'd have to put aside a certain amount in a reserve every year. We would. That's certainly a way to do okay. it. Yeah. 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 That's true. Peter, and then Leanne, and then John. I mean, I guess it might be I'm uncomfortable packing it this way because I have a perception from our community is going to be it's kind of a big switch. You're going to put a piece of it up now, a piece of it up later, and it's going to cost more. I would rather, if you feel like you need to put it in the ballot, which would be really good if we actually had a corporate sponsor, I think that would, that would be a great message. So I would be in favor of putting up, if we're going to put it in the ballot, put up the whole amount. Um, because I think that I think we'll be we'll, I think the perception of putting a piece up on it now and coming back in November and putting another piece on, especially with we haven't talked about it, especially if there's a bunch of other referendum items <laughs> on the ballot in November. Um, I think I think we're rolling the dice that that won't be approved. So if, if this is a dire need, uh, I think we're better off trying to package it whatever we need to get it done sell it for the reasons, but it would be great if we had a corporate sponsor. 
that, that put some of the money out. No, I, just, I don't think that, that's, that's what we're going to do. Sure. So we're going to talk about that? There's five of us in the <laughs> we're already we're already losing five hundred. We're in the hole of five hundred thousand dollars a year. So oh, I'm pretty really sure they're not. Gonna <laughs> no. I would say that as far as putting this back on the ballot, it's incumbent upon all of us to do a better job communicating to mm -hmm. the community. We really fell down on that, um, as you probably saw. That. that field is a hot mess, and for whatever reason, we did not talk about that. Whether it was because we didn't want to address that there could be safety concerns as we're putting our football team on there, as our soccer team is playing, maybe we should have. And it might have had a very different story, but with respect to there having to be a lower number, the cost of goods goes up every year. I can't walk into Hannaford and pay the same price for milk I paid a year ago. Hell, I can barely pay the same price I paid last week. I mean, it's. It, Sorry, but it's true. I mean, prices are going up, and to say that it has to be a lower amount means we're going to do a lesser product for the students. This is safety. This is not a, we just want to have the newest and greatest. There's true issues with that field. Sandy, can I, can I ask you to answer something definitively? If we do nothing, are all sports on that turf and track in the campus? What I've heard, probably in a year or two. Okay, but if, if just look at that in perspective, and that was built, it was built for about eight years, and it's 14 years. So we've done very well considering how old it is. And I, as a taxpayer, I hate, I hate it when people talk about the urgency and the sky is falling, but you have to think about the students down the road. The students <coughs> But does the athletic director currently, right now, have a plan that we stole all this, that something's getting canceled in the near future? I.e., the fall sports season of... Well, he did give us a, a presentation. I think we would ultimately need a legal opinion on this. Because well, I just think it's a point of clarity, because I, I just don't I know. So, I, so, yeah. Yeah, it's, I, it was my understanding that we were going to spend some money to do mitigation. Yeah. Yeah. And that was going to carry us through right. this fall. And that's what we talked about. In, we had a meeting between Don, and I, Sandy, and May and yes. April. And we, we did plan on saying, okay, well, there's mitigate. Let's just mitigate. Or what's the cost of mitigation? And right now, those numbers are unclear because, as Tom said, there's snow on the ground. Mm -hmm. So these people want to look at the seams ripping, and they, there's snow on the ground. So the number 20 grand was getting kicked around, so I bumped it to 50 <coughs> because of exactly what Peter said earlier. So. We're looking into tens of thousands of dollars of mitigation if we just patch it up. But we know that can be done. No, it just won't. We'll find out when they quote it. Yeah, we'll find out when they quote it, I guess. Well, have they quoted it? They haven't, and the two conferences we talked to were unwilling to because of their straight uncertainty. They only held a price. Yeah. And literally, they come look at a seam, and it could be 100 feet that needs to be fixed, or it could be two feet. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be, you know, with the age of the system, it, it does fail like that, catastrophically. Just to be clear, if we are so successful to get full approval in June, just to Peter's point, I don't believe the work would actually be accomplished until the following spring. Yeah, that's my understanding also. Including the track. Mm -hmm. Including the track. It'd be a combined project. They would do it as soon well, as they possibly could after school let out. They would work like crazy over the summer to get ready for well, the was talk I think that was Part of that conversation with Mike was bringing our spring sports right. to the USM. Right. Yeah, but we can't do that with fall. Right. It was, it, it was easier so, for him. He wouldn't have to wait till June, though, necessarily. It was easier for him to rearrange the spring schedule than it was yeah. the it fall was schedule. And so that was part of, I think, the bifurcation. Yeah, the, the problem with the June support, you wouldn't get a contractor mobilized for at least two weeks after that. So you're, you're starting almost July 1st. And so it just the time of getting the work done is. It's just not there. Can I say But I think for the voters, I think we're 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 not even there. I think with with corporate sponsorship because I, I don't think it's necessarily just selling it. Because I, I think we want to understand about the safety. But most of you, when we vote for things on a ballot, you know, like whether you were for it or against it, we have a giant new public safety bill. So this people see as maintenance. What the heck were you doing? Not getting the maintenance done on this. Field. I mean, that, that's, that's the way people are seeing it. 
So, I mean, I'm just wondering if we should be looking at this as a combination and some of it goes into a budget somewhere to offset some of this. Hopefully there's some corporate sponsorship. Hopefully, you know, I think the voters have got to believe that this won't happen again. They just don't see it as the same. Even a new fire truck. Okay, it's time to get a new fire truck. We're going to bond that. You know, even that people question sometimes, why aren't we saving for fire trucks? You know, but this is... Like it's a I'm gonna, it's like it's no, it's, I'm gonna leave you alone, Peter. I'm not gonna say. No, no question, it's going to need something at some point. So I think we've got to do more to get this through, regardless of what amount that we put on it. And that means maybe tightening the belt in some other areas across all the budgets, as well as the, I don't think corporate sponsorship is enough, is what I think. And I was, me and Peter were laughing at it, not you. Uh, Hillary and then John. Sure. <laughs> sure. Um, I think, so I have two things. One is I think that when this originally went to referendum, like we as a school board were like updated on the, 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 um, the quality of the facility, but we were like told, okay, well, this is like community services, they're gonna, you know, this is, they, they're the ones who, uh, maintain it and pay for it and so I think there was like some not miscommunication but like we were like okay and we didn't really I think my point is that if this goes out again I feel like I have a better understanding that we are I think you're saying incur being encouraged to use what resources we have to to also you know like get this get the information out and I think my second point is that I think that it is true that, you know, I have a daughter who plays a sport. It's the number one sport for concussions. And now I know she's playing on a turf that she's even more likely to get a concussion on. And, you know, as a board, it's scary to put that stuff out there because we don't want to freak parents out and say that we, their kids are somewhere that's unsafe. But I do think that it would be advantageous to some of these test results that we have, I mean, we should let people know this isn't a maintenance issue. This field has outlived its expected lifespan by double, and it's now at the point where we're concerned about it not being safe in the next year. Look, I want to be absolutely crystal fine. clear. I, I'll speak for myself, but I would hope Sandy would agree with that. If he does, we will not let that field be used if it's unsafe. I understand that. I understand that. The way you're characterizing that, I, I just want to be clear. No, I'll, I guess I meant that my point is that it, it is going to get to a point where it's unsafe if we don't well, do something. And, and at that point, we're, we're not going to let kids play on it. Right, and I'm trying. I'm here tonight trying to avoid the crisis right. that will happen in this right. community when it, there's not a Friday night football. Just, just answer that about maintenance. I'm not saying it's what has to be done is maintenance. I'm saying it's inevitable, right? I mean, you know that it was going to happen because they had a light, they had an eight, eight year light, we're at year 14. But you know, that's where the voters, some of their problems, so why don't we plan ahead for this? But I think it's been in the capital improvement plan for the last five years. Yeah, it was on so, the facilities I mean, plan in 2016. Right. But, but so that's we had planned plan for it. If it was maintenance, we, we wouldn't need to go to the voters for it. It's because it's a capital improvement that even if we had a fund set aside that had a million dollars in it, we still have to go to the voters and say, can we use this million dollars for this capital well, improvement? Why would you say that? Portables are not capital, and this is a capital This is the definition of capital. It, that's because they're movable. So because this is a field that's attached to the property, it's a, that's what gives it's it a capital, capital improvement. improvement. It's not a capital improvement. It is. It's a replacement of uh, existing. Well, it's like, if you can find a nuance that we don't need to send it to the voters, I'll support it. <laughs> <laughs> regardless of what you're saying, a dollar amount requires voter approval. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then we run that much through the public safety board. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was thinking we should wait until November, because we're going to get a big draw in November because of the national election. Because if you go any sooner, the voters are going to say, library, the school, my child, then Matt. We're just not doing it. So, <laughs> so. Why don't you put it out for more? What's that? I said, why don't you put it out for more? Why don't you put it out for more? It's probably going to cost more if you just learned that lesson. No, no, listen, I'm not, I'm just letting everybody know. I mean, Peter, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but this is coming from, and perhaps Don and I spoke for the council too quickly, yeah. but we just thought this was pretty cut and dry, this isn't going to happen, because this town has a long memory, and 
I was just talking to a gentleman in the corner, we're still talking about public safety, right? And and so I wasn't allowed to go make the turf track field, the new public safety building from when I was seven years old. So yeah, But isn't that premise on an assumption that the reason why you failed sorry. is because of the money and not because people it doesn't were, matter. were I mean, educated? It, I mean it, it's it possible that the message was not put out. Well, shame on us. We well, would. exactly. But we would. But we also have to make a choice. We are the board's A faulty premise. The voters didn't have the GMAX test results. They didn't, they didn't understand that piece of it. I don't think. I think that test alone is a justification for you. I have I'm people right approach right. me and say, I don't get why you have that stupid turf. We paid all this money for mm -hmm. it all of the years ago, and I think you should just put in grass again. Right. Well, and we have that extra. Well, that was possible. Which is more expensive. Which is more expensive. I'm just listening. I'm just letting everybody know here, including the council. I mean, if Don and I, I think, would gladly be overruled in this case, but I just. I have a real hard time putting the same project up at the same price and the All same. There's a better chance of the voters, you know, wearing us down than us wearing the voters down on this one. You know, put the same number up, you know, second time in a row. What do we do? That's incredibly cynical. Why do you get messaging? Well, we can't. I, I can't. I don't. I don't know what happened or didn't happen in the hall. We approved two million bucks for. Uh, it's a government land trust for money they don't really need to spend in the next 20 years. And what was the, the second one that had? The fire truck. Okay, so my girl had a 51 year old fire truck that's probably going to get, you know, probably got good money out of it for some of those MIT. So those two things passed, and this didn't make it. They didn't make it. Fire trucks are always there. I've walked the field. I walk the field. I, I, my neighbor in my old neighborhood sold the field. To the to the school this is before he is thrown away. Can you ask him when he's got that? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I'm just I'm telling you, we we did spend time on this. Yeah. And please, I mean, I I we deserve to all the crap we're getting right now. So what's that? I was going to say, like, how do you not look at that and think? You know, you know this is really bad. do you want an honest answer to that? I feel like I feel like there's, there's a lot of hyperbole used on the school side sometimes, and I I mean I've heard that you know it's unsafe. Well, it's not unsafe. The the, the results don't say it's unsafe. They, the results they, they do not. The field, they do not fail that. They did not the fail that test. test. They didn't fail the test. But there are portions of the field that did. Sure, fail. and that's what mitigation is for. And I, and half of me is playing devil's advocate here. I I actually am with you on, but I just. It, I'm it, passed the, it passed the test. It passed the test. It is safe to play on. We have a town manager and a superintendent that have given us their word that they would put a padlock on it if it was actually unsafe. And it's not getting padlocked. So it isn't unsafe. I'd be really cautious with saying that when you're talking about hyperbole. We had the athletic director who came to a meeting and said, the bounce is closer to landing on concrete than it is to grass. So that to me. Well, then, then, then chain it up. And then maybe we'll put a, put a chain on it, and then maybe we'll put it back. You're saying it is not unsafe. Yeah. I'm asking you. You're asking me to change my language. Yep. I'm asking you to change your language. I'm saying, according to the study, it was not it, it, it was it was not deemed unsafe. It wasn't deemed to padlock it. It was not deemed unsafe. But it's not going to get any better on its own. It's only going to get worse, is the, is the reality. And frankly, oh, I agree the, with all. It's almost <laughs> a year to do this project without interruption. So the point of the conversation is we need to avoid a crisis, either padlocking it or, you know, discontinuing sports for the whole world. Mr. Gill? Isn't that the, so, so I'm saying I'm realizing all this, and I'm thinking about all these projects have in common, and here's what they have in common, we're kicking the can down the road on all of them. Mm -hmm. And I'm very concerned with the number of things that are piling up behind the gate. I'm yeah. not talking about the game on the field. I'm talking about in general. We have we have a field that's yes. we have a field that is not an A field, it's a C field. And I don't have kids and I don't care if it's passes. It's a D. Well, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna say my point is that we have a field, we have a school that we're kind of not supposed to be talking about, but we are. We have a public safety <laughs> building that we're finishing and, and, and you know that the people are concerned about. We have people still talk about our town hall. We have this aura in town right now that, that is of skepticism and I'm concerned about our ability to address these long-term projects if we keep pushing them to the next November, to the next June, to the next November, to the next June, 
If you don't start knocking things off the list, this list is going to be insurmountable. Well, if it isn't already, <laughs> I'm really worried about. Did you? What's your plan? How do you? <laughs> let, let your council talk about it. There's still one happening in your private meetings. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a completely fair criticism. <laughs> I mean, Peter Hayley just, just blew me away. He wants to put it back up. <laughs> I think she say no. <laughs> <laughs> that's I mean, it's disrespectful to put the exact same thing in front of the voters again. That's a really hard thing to do. Read that media. media. I, I, I want to get it done. That's not a bad solution. Uh, November is not a horrible solution either. I, I question whether anything is going to pass in June. Yep. Um, that's the spirit. <laughs> well, that's it. Oh, boy. Oh, jeez. I like it. I like it. The, uh, <laughs> the, 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 we're getting way off track here. The, um, so we made it, well, the, yeah, okay. So the consultant report is due some, according to them, in late in February. So my guess is it's going to see the light of day on the agenda. March fourth would be the workshop, which we get the presentation. Um, but I am, we are purposely holding off till the consulting report gets back with a foresight of if we go through this song and dance, we're all going to sit there and say, let's wait for the consultant report. Yeah. So we're just trying to get it all done. But we should just table yeah. everything until then, so we can look at things in a big picture. No. No. Yeah. I see what you're doing there. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that's the exact one. <coughs> no, you're, you're misreading what that's doing right there. <laughs> so, um, just to circle back to the turf replacement proposal, I know I don't have a, a horse in the race because I don't get to decide this, but um, but I think I actually, I mean, I think Peter has a good point. I think it's going to cost way more money if we, if we break it up into two different projects. And I don't think it's disrespectful to put it back in front of the voters because we have more information than we did last time. And just as an example, well, I mean, not an example, but I mean, we, we did it with the GSEA. We were like, I, we don't feel like people have the accurate information. And maybe we were wrong, and, but you know, we worked our butts off to get all the accurate information out there and put it back on. And but that was asked, a net revenue generator. I'm just saying. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm just saying. I that's, mean, I you mean, can say the same thing. It failed. Yeah. We could have washed our hands of it and said, "Oh, it failed. Too bad." But I, I think if I understood what Tom was saying, because the voters said no, if we want to have certain parts of this field operational in the fall, we need to split the project now, whether we want to or not. No, we can't. No, I don't, we don't have. Well, we, that is true. I think that's what he. So I don't. I think that's that true. If we want to have it done in the fall, but I think mm -hmm. we're saying we could not have it done in the fall and have it done for the following spring. We would then have to We would then have to it. Like, does, does the track need to be done right away? There are there are repairs that need to be done. And, but the and whole replacement, track replacement is evident, yes. Okay. The material's actually coming up off the, All right. off the surface. So if we were to get the entire amount of money, I thought you were saying we shouldn't start it in spring as we did wouldn't have it ready for the fall to do the whole project. Right. I think we would probably wait till the following spring and do it as one project, is my understanding. But I'll let those closer to it make that decision. But so if we got the money this June, we wait a year to do it? Yes. That takes a little of the urgency out of it. Well, it's a matter of <coughs> yeah. It's a matter of working around the it's yeah, it's it's so I, if I can, I can right, just say you sell it, but just say, well, give us the money in June, but we're not, yeah. no, I mean, that kind of goes to Ken's point about putting it on another. I can do it, like, super quickly. Our athletic director gave us, like, a, a long presentation, but basically, because of the way sports schedules work at the colleges, our fall schedules are, are, are smacked up against each other. They're exactly the same. So we don't have the opportunity to, like, move any of our home games to any of like to USM or any of the colleges run, but our spring schedules don't match up. So we can finagle our spring schedule to to have our home games played at like USM and UNE and some of the other colleges around. That's why it's a project that so it wouldn't disrupt the school well, would disrupt it obviously because they'd be playing somewhere else, but 
his point was that if you did the product, if you started the project in the spring, you wouldn't you'd be able to be done for the following fall without disrupting the spring sports. But if you started in the summer, you wouldn't be able to get it done in time to have the fall sports and there's nowhere else to play them. That was I don't know if that helps. We well, have to like whiteboard yeah. this on a timeline. It's confusing. This we had plan makes a lot of sense. Talk about the CMB's plan makes sense. Right. That's I mean, I, I hear your concern, Peter, but I mean, in terms of timing and getting the project done and passing it, it, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but what, I mean, the elephant in the room, I, sort of to your comment, mm -hmm. I take a little bit of I mean, when, when you just do the quick math, we do the wider expansion, you do the school, you do the community center, and you do the field, mm -hmm. all within a year or two of each other. Mm -hmm. It increases the tax rate over 10%. Mm -hmm. You know? We can we can talk among ourselves all we want. Mm -hmm. We've got to get people to show up at the battle and vote. In my concern, the reason I'm suggesting it, if we do pass those two things in November, mm -hmm. there's not going to be an appetite to go back for the rest of this project for a while. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it is a strategy. I don't know what the right answer is. It's a really difficult one. I don't think anybody's questioning. You know, this work needs to get done. Mm -hmm. Now it's it's not convincing us. It's mm -hmm. convincing. What will the voters most likely approve, and what's the best way to approach them? That, that's that's just my concern. I, I think if, and it, unfortunately, the next agenda item, which is really getting a better idea, maybe of when these things are going to fall. But but we've got some major choices. This community has. we can't have it all, and, and there's a lot of wants on the list, and not necessarily needs. And, and until we get a better idea of how we're going to prioritize those things, I think it, it impacts this decision. But I, I think we do run the risk of get half of it now, and then if we go back after all the other things are approved, the voters are going to have it. Yeah. I would rather go to the voters for the same project and do a better job of explaining the need than to be accused of some sort of gimmick. And yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a harder message saying we're splitting apart. I, I'd rather I go think that's less stand respectful. Stand tall and say the need still exists. Here's the true cost. Here's a unified position by the elected body. Um, I like your chances better than this approach. And Tom, I, you told us that 1.2 is not the number anymore. It's going to be more than that. So you go back to the voters with a real number, whatever it is, but it's going to be more than the last number. I, I, I believe we can stay at 1.2 if we're able to put the whole project out. I've got good, hard numbers right now with contractors ready to sign. The document. The weights later, I think it's going to be more expensive. Yes. So I, this is just something. I, I don't know if you want the answer, but this is in the downtown tip. Is there a way to use tip revenue um, to pay for this? So if we went out and started bonding it, we're going to pay for it with growth in the downs. Um, Ooh. 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 I can check. I, I don't think so. <laughs> 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 Or instead of bonding it, Rocky writes a check and we all be home by 10. Yeah. <laughs> you knew I was going to do it to you. Seed money. Start the capital. Oh, 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 back to your thing, you said in June, if, if it went to the voter in June and they passed it, the work would not happen until the following spring. Is that so more than likely to make sure it doesn't disrupt? So or we can why wouldn't we wait until November? Because you know we're going to have three times the voters. Because we're going to have those three huge things. Three you can. It's, it's, it's really well, we trying to deal with these as they come as opposed to packing them in all the way. I think my speculation is part of the reason it lost is uh, you know there were competing measures. And I think we a small turnout. I mean, yeah, well, what? It's three thousand. Right. So sure, perhaps yeah. with better messaging, with a stronger position of leadership from the elected bodies, uh, a better demonstration of need, the success will be different. What was the turnout last June? Do you remember this? What was the voter turnout? Forty-seven. Three thousand. It's not. Uh, it's no, it was. This fall was like forty-five hundred. Yeah, I was going to say forty. It's forty. It's forty. It's forty. It's forty. Yeah. June was, yeah, Yeah, it's going to be, I mean, November's going to go crazy. So you said the cost is the next poll it says use reserve projects of care. Is that the amount you're trying to get? No, we'd have to do just to make sure that it's playable in seven weeks or whatever. So that's an incremental amount that's going to be 